All right, let's go on to subtracting decimals. And the good thing about this is if you if I'm going too fast, you can rewind it and listen back, rewatch a clip so that it makes sense to you. All right, we're going to subtract decimals now. And as you know, when you subtract decimals, the first step is to line up the decimal points according to the algorithm, which is a step-by-step -step process for computing. And then after you've lined up the decimal points, you're going to subtract each column digit by digit. And remember that a decimal is a fraction whose denominator is a power of 10. So this right here is a decimal. And the point of the decimal point is actually to just keep track of how many of what power of 10 you have in your denominator. So the number is, without the decimal point, 371. And I have one digit to the right of the decimal point. So that's going to tell me that I have 10 to the first power, because I only have one, di one decimal digit. And 10 to the first power is 10. It's 1 with 1 0. So 37 and 1 tenth means that I have 371 tenths. OK? All right. So let us first perform the subtraction by lining up the decimal points. 38.74 minus, I'm going to put 7.1 beginning under the digit 8 so that the decimal points can line up. And then every other number is going to get a 0 underneath it. Now I'm going to perform the subtraction. 4 minus 0 is 4. 7 minus 1 is 6. 8 minus 7 is 1 and 3 minus 0 is 3, leaving me with an answer of 31 and 64 hundredths. Now I just want to show you what, what this would look like if you were actually subtracting the decimal fractions. I'm going to take 38 and 74 hundredths. I'm going to write 3,874. 3, Look at the number without a decimal point first, and then it's going to be 10 to the 1 to second power. That means their 10 to the second power is 100. Next, I'm going to subtract that from 71. And it's one decimal digit to the right. That means it's 10 to the first power, which is 10. So if you can see here, they're both not on the same number line. They don't have the same uh, denominator. One is in hundredths and the other is in tenths. Therefore, I'm going to have to uh, either use the FFFP um, or I can use the equivalent fractions theorem, which says when you want to make an equivalent fraction, multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. So I'm going to take 71 tenths and I'm going to multiply that by 10 over 10 simply because I want to be able to get a common denominator and the same units of hundredths. So I'm not going to touch this. And when I do that, I now have 710 hundredths. And this right here symbolizes the step of lining up the decimal points. You line up the decimal points because you want to get the same denominator. I've lined them up and the same denominator that I have in common is hundredths. There are two digits to the right, two digits to the right, and then I'm just going to subtract. And when I do that, I get 4 minus 0, which is 4, 7 minus 1, which is 6, 8 minus 7, which is 1, and 3 minus 0, which is 3. Now, if I look at this, and I want to write it in a shorthand notation, using that decimal point to tell me how many zeros I have in my denominator, I'm going to write 3, 1, 6, 4, just as my numerator says. And then I'm going to have 1, 2, two decimal digits to the right of the decimal point. And that decimal point keeps track of how many um, 
how many zeros I have in the denominator. So the answer is 31 and 64 hundredths, just like we had over here. Now we're going to try this next one together. I actually meant to switch the order of these. So I'm going to rewrite the problem for you right now. This is what I meant to write. 34 and 17 hundredths minus 634 thousandths. All right, first step is to line up the decimal points. I'm going to write 34 and 17 hundredths minus 634 thousandths beginning under the digit 4 so that the decimal points line up. So if I look here, I have three digits to the right of the decimal point. Therefore, I have a common denominator. These are both in thousandths now. Now I can subtract. All right, it's now time for us to perform subtraction. Remembering if the first digit on the top is less than the digit on the bottom, we're going to have to borrow. All right, zero is not less than, is not greater than or equal to four. Therefore, I'm going to have to borrow from the seven and borrow a 10 from the seven. And I'm going to add 10 to zero, which gives me 10. All right, now six minus three, that is okay. All right, let's go on to one and six. One minus six, one is less than six. Therefore, I'm going to have to borrow one from the 4 and add 1 to the 11 which makes it 1 to the 10 1 to the 1 which makes it 11 and then I have 11 minus 6 that's okay and then 3 minus 0 that's okay and then 3 minus 0 that's okay all right let's subtract 10 minus 4 6 6 minus 3 3 11 minus 6 5 3 minus 0 3 and 3 minus 0 3 so the answer comes out to 33 and 536 thousandths. All right, now I'm going to ask you to try this one on your own. 7,643 and 8 tenths minus 35 and 761 thousandths. And when you're all set, you can hit the play button. But for now, hit pause while you're working out this problem. All right, now it's time to check and see how your work matches up with the work on the paper. So the first step, step A, is to make sure that you line up the decimal points and you have done that. If, if, you're, if your numbers look like this on the, on the setup, you're off to a good start. Now they all have the same sequence, which they're in the thousands, same denominator, same number lines, so we can add a subtract. And then once you've done your subtraction, there's a lot of borrowing that has to take place, you should get an answer of 7,608 and 39 thousandths. However, um, if you wanted to look at it in terms of uh, fractions and not the decimal point notation, you can look at the work below and see that you get the same exact answer if you actually use the equivalent fractions rule for one of these fractions. And at any time you can pause if you need to take a closer look at something and then just join us back. 